All instruction given or received by way of argument proceeds from pre-existent knowledge. This becomes evident upon a survey of all the species of such instruction. The mathematical sciences and all other speculative disciplines are acquired in this way, and so are the two forms of dialectical reasoning, syllogistic and inductive. For each of these latter makes use of old knowledge to impart new, the syllogism assuming an audience that accepts its premises, induction exhibiting the universal as implicit in the clearly known particular. Again, the persuasion exerted by rhetorical arguments is in principle the same, since they use either example, a kind of induction, or enthymeme, a form of syllogism. The pre-existent knowledge required is of two kinds. In some cases, admission of the fact must be assumed. In others, comprehension of the meaning of the term used. And sometimes both assumptions are essential. Thus, we assume that every predicate can be either truly affirmed or truly denied of any subject, and that triangle means so-and-so. As regards unit, we have to make the double assumption of the meaning of the word and the existence of the thing. The reason is that these several objects are not equally obvious to us. Recognition of a truth may in some cases contain as factors both previous knowledge and also knowledge acquired simultaneously with that recognition. Knowledge, this latter, of the particulars actually falling under the universal and therein already virtually known. For example, the student knew beforehand that the angles of every triangle are equal to two right angles, but it was only at the actual moment at which he was being led on to recognize this as true in the instance before him that he came to know this figure inscribed in the semicircle to be a triangle. For some things, why delicate, the singulars finally reached which are not predicable of anything else as subject, are only learnt in this way. It is, there is here no recognition through a middle of a minor term as subject to a major. Before he was led on to recognition, or before he actually drew a conclusion, we should perhaps say that in a manner he knew, in a manner not. If he did not, in an unqualified sense of the term, know the existence of this triangle, how could he know without qualification that its angles were equal to two right angles? No. Clearly he knows, not without qualification, but only in the sense that he knows universally. If this distinction is not drawn, we are faced with the dilemma in the menu. Either a man will learn nothing or what he already knows, for we cannot accept the solution which some people offer. A man is asked, do you or do you not know that every pair is even? He says he does know it. The questioner then produces a particular pair of the existence and so a fortiori of the evenness of which he was unaware. The solution which some people offer is to assert that they do not know that every pair is even, but only that everything which they know to be a pair is even. Yet what they know to be even is that of which they have demonstrated evenness. It is what they made the subject of their premise. Why delicate, not merely every triangle or number which they know to be such, but any and every number or triangle without reservation. For no premise is ever crouched in the form, every number which you know be such, or every rectilinear figure which you know to be such. The predicate is always constructed as applicable to any and every instance of the thing. On the other hand, I imagine there is nothing to prevent a man in one sense knowing what he is learning in another not knowing it. The strange thing would be, not if in some sense he knew what he was learning, but if he were to know it in that precise sense and manner in which he was learning it. 